Hello everybody. In this video, I want to give a quick, really quick introduction about JetHub and Jet, how it works and what it actually is. So let's get started. As you can see, I have my folder open. I will create a new directory. Let's do we want. And let me go inside that folder. And I will create another one here called um, jet and let's actually open it so now that I have my folder jet I want to explain what it, what it is and what I actually do jet is a version control it's pretty much a way to keep tracking of the changes that you are doing in your code your jet um, folder is actually called repository a repository you will make it changes over time. Those changes could be the simple lines, adding files, removing files, whenever you're doing what you are programming. So keeping record of those changes are really important. That way you can actually test something. When it doesn't work, you can get back. JIT helps us a lot with some advances, like for example, keeping different branches. Branches could be like different, um, it's some kind of parallel work for your code. You can actually say, okay, I'm doing something in my directory working on your master branch where you have your program. And you want to test a new functionality without disrupting what you have in your main code. So you create a new branch called new functionality and start making those changes. When you like those changes, you want to incorporate to master, you do a merge. So it's a way to actually do changes we are affecting and keeping track of everything that you're doing. Those branches will help you a lot during time whenever you're doing course. So I want to give you a really, really quick introduction. I will create some text files. I will going to do some changes in there and we're going to upload to JetHub. JetHub is a way to actually save JetHub repository, uh, JIT repositories. It's the most common one and it's the one that we'll be using for the class. So let's get started. So let me open a terminal. I am my week one JIT repository and I will create a text.txt file. Um, I will put hello there and I'm saving that. Right now, if, if I do another change, for example, if I delete the word save, I cannot get back to that word anymore after you save it. So how we keep track of that? We are using the JIT of the branches. Right now we don't have anything there yet because we don't have JIT enabled. So let's actually enable JIT in our directory. So let's do a JIT in it. It will help us to initialize an empty repository. That empty repository, as you can see right now, is having my full path. And now my, my source control tab it showed me something that I have a change and this change is called you. This you it means that it's untracked. What is untracked that is a pretty much a new file. If I select there, I can say that before I didn't have anything and after that I have a line which says text hello in there. In order to know the status, we can actually do git status in your command in the same directory where you are. And it says that we are in branch master, it's pretty much the main line of your source code. And there is no commit, nothing saved yet. And I have a file that is in tracked. So let's add this file. We can add this file with a git add command. If I do a dot, it's pretty much add everything. It's just helpful to have that kind of shortcut. But you can actually add one specific file. In this case, I will do a git add dot in order to add it and you will see that my changes move from changes to staged. That means that it's ready to be committed. If I do a git status again, you can see that I have changed to be committed and I have a new file state going to be integrated. Let's actually commit that file. Git commit with the dash m and we open parentheses and we put a 
the comment about what this commit is going to do. So I put like an init commit. Created the text file. It's really important to close with the the close the double quotes. With hit enter, and you will see that my changes disappear. That means that this is already where it's supposed to be. So now let's actually create another file. Well, let's keep this one and put hello again. I save it. And in this little icon, I will create another .txt. Hello from another file. And let's actually put it like this. I know it's a typo, we will fix that later. If we're going over tracks to see what is changes, we have untracked and what modified. Untracked is like a new file was created that you can see right now. And the unmodified is telling us that this line changes with this new text. So we can actually add the files, all the changes through JIT add the way that we did it before, or something that Visual Studio Code helps us a lot. If you go through the tab here, you can see that plus sign to say stage all changes, or you can stage individual ones. So let's stage everything from here. Everything is staged, and we can actually, the comment, we can comment it in this, in this input box, let's put created another file. And then this little check mark is for commit. Let's commit. Perfect. We are going to our files again. And we have our text file and the another. And then we find out that we have typo. We can actually do fix that typo stage that typo and then fix typo and we commit it then we can actually let's do one more file and this one's going to be really important it's going to call dot git ignore and we'll type new txt in there then create another file called new.txt and we put this file will never be committed. Why? Because we created in the root directory a JIT ignore is telling the JIT don't follow up this file that we are show, I'm showing you here and we type a new file called new.txt that's why the new.txt is not showing in my changes. Also, you will see that I have a different color in my explorer. That means that that file is, is never going to be tracked through JIT. Through JIT. So let's stage my JIT ignore and we added JIT ignore. And we commit again. And that way we are keeping our records on different files. So let me actually open my Firefox. And as you can see here, I have my GitHub account. I hope that everybody has your GitHub account already. So I will create a new repository. And this repository is going to be called test JIT. I will put it as public right now. I don't need it to be private. And I will create. After I have that, I have an empty repository on the cloud or in GitHub, and I have a repository ready in my computer. Let's synchronize those. What I need to do, I need to add, so I just need to copy this part to add the origin. So I'm copying and pasting that, and I click Enter. If it's the first time that you run the command, probably will type ask you for your GitHub username and password. That's 
normally fine. I have a special configuration that node array that I'm myself. But if asked you, you put your email and your email and your password in order to connect. And after that, we just do git push or record master. We select that. And we can see that everything has been pushed and we have a new branch. If we go back to JetHub and refresh, we can see that our text file is there, hello with hello again. Or another file is hello from another file. My git ignore file is there, listing my new.txt. But my, my new.txt is actually not here because we're getting ignored. Something really important, we can see a commit section in this place. If we click it, we'll see all the different comments that we have been doing during time. All those comments have a special ID, as you can see on the right. Those numbers are going to be changed by computer. So if I select the first one, I will say that this introduces a new file, put it in hello. If I select the second one, this is say that that file changed, it created, and I removed the hello and added hello with hello again. Perfect. Then this one told me that I changed from field to file, so I fixed this, that typo. So it's telling me which difference I did over time. And this one just added the JIT ignore. So this is a really quick introduction about JIT, how it works and how actually you handle different um, repositories. Now, if you're, let's say, for example, I will go back, I will remove my folder, so I don't have anything there anymore. Let me close everything. If I list my directory, you will see that it's empty. If I do a dir, if you are in a Windows machine, you need to do dir, but in Mac, I do a less and it shows me that it's empty. That means that all my files are not there anymore. How can you recover those files? Well, you already save it on the cloud. If we select clone or copy, we can actually copy this. With this button, I'll just copy this one over here. And we just do git clone from here. More likely, we'll ask you for username and password. That's fine. After you get in that, I can do NLS, and you see that I have my test JIT. If I open my test JIT, let me open my code in here. You will see that I have my text file, my another file, and my JIT ignore with all the changes that we have in the cloud. So let's actually make another change. Well, before we do a change, as you can see, the new txt file is not there because that was never tracked by JIT. By JIT. So that's something you need to take over. Like whenever you are here, it's pretty much the information that you actually don't require. But you also need to be tracked. So in this way, it doesn't matter to be in your repository. Let's do another change. Let's put a by txt. And we say just goodbye. Happy coding everybody. I save that, you will see that I have my file on track. So let me just track that file and commit it. Add it by file. In my com in my Mac computer, I can do command enter. That is going to be the pretty much as commit. So I do command enter. It allows me to do that. And now you will see there is a little icon here on the bottom that say that I need to synchronize this. If I click it, it will synchronize with my repository. But there is also a new way to do it. Let me open my terminal here. I can do it again my git push origin master. The same way that we did it before. Or we just click this little icon. Let me click the icon. I say yes, it's going to be sync it, you will see that spending well there, and then it's finished. When it's finished, I have four different commits here. If I refresh the page, 
you will see that now we have five and then one last one added the by file so in this really quick video we'll learn a little about JIT we'll learn how to actually start tracking files how to keep files not to be tracked we'll learn how about cloud repository as GitHub the one that we are going to be using we'll learn how to clone a repository to put it in our computer and how we can actually push new information from your computer to that repository and keep track of everything. So I hope that you like it. Any question or doubt, don't hesitate to reach me. Happy coding, everybody.